Nowadays, hair loss is a big problem for all. All are suffering from hair loss problem, child, young boy or girl, teenagers, men and women all are in hair loss disease. Hair loss in women at any age and for any reason in discouraging, frustrating, and sometimes even devastating. The most common type of hair loss in women is called female pattern hair loss. Many factors such as medical conditions, genetics, some medications, harsh scale, hormonal changes, occurred hair loss. Methods to treat this condition in women are effective in some cases but in others medical and surgical interventions may be needed to restore hairy growth. In this video we mention how to treat female hair loss. Here are three methods to say how to treat female hair loss. Method 1. Determining the cause of your hair loss. Step 1. See your doctor to rule out a medical condition. Several medical conditions can either temporarily or permanently interfere with normal hair, growth and development. These are a. Iron deficiency anemia B. Thyroid conditions C. Deficiencies in zinc, vitamin D, and possibly the B vitamin group D. Hormonal level alterations of androgen, testosterone, and estrogen-derived hormones E. Autoimmune disease F. Major psychological stress G. Physical trauma H. Scalp infections and skin disorders I. Diabetes J. Lupus K. Trichotillomania L. Extreme weight loss, or extreme change in diet M. Severe infection accompanied by a high fever. Step 2. Treat the medical condition. Your doctor will need as much information as possible about your hair loss problem, so be prepared to discuss this issue in depth. Be prepared to describe when it began any significant life events that occurred just prior to the problem, steps you have taken to resolve it, and how much distress the hair loss is causing you. Step 3 Understand how your hair grows. A. The anagen phase is the period when your hair is actively growing, about 85% of your hair is in the anagen, or growing phase, at any given time. B. The catagen phase is a short period of time, about two weeks in durations, that allows the follicle to regenerate. Hair growth is halted during the catagen phase. C. The telogen phase is considered the resting phase of hair growth, and lasts for two to four months. At the end of this phase the hair falls out. Most people normally lose about 100 hairs each day due to the hair that is in the telogen phase. D. Many medical conditions encourage hair to enter the telogen phase. This may cause as many as 300 hairs to be lost each day. The medical term for excessive hair loss during this phase is telogen effluvium. Step 4. Realize that telogen effluvium is often temporary. Since your hair remains in the telogen phase for several months, your hair loss may not occur immediately after the event that triggered it. This would include physical trauma and severe emotional stressors. Step 5. Review your medications with your doctor. Do not alter your medications for any reason. Talk with your doctor about your concerns. If you feel a medication is causing your hair loss, your doctor may be able to help by either adjusting the dose or prescribing a similar medication to take its place. Some medications that are known to contribute to hair loss include lithium, warfarin, heparin, and levodopa. Drugs that are classed as better blockers can also cause hair loss. Examples of medications in this class include propranolol, adenolol, and metoprolol. Amphetamine derivatives can cause hair loss. Examples of amphetamine medications include amphetamine salts, most commonly recognized by the brand name Adderall. Dextromphetamine, and Listix amphetamine. Chemotherapy medications, such as doxorubicin, commonly cause sudden and complete hair loss, as does radiation therapy associated with cancer treatment. Step 6. Consider the role of genetics. The most common pattern of genetic hair-induced hair loss involves losing hair at any earlier than normal age, losing hair more quickly than normal 
and an overall thinning of hair in women. Step 7. Recognize hair loss from hormonal changes. Some situations that cause fluctuations in hormones result in temporary hair loss, and others a gradual but permanent change in hair growth. A good example of temporary hair loss is from pregnancy and childbirth. The onset of menopause is often accompanied by a noticeable loss of hair. Menopause is part of the normal aging process, and the associated changes in hormone levels lead to a gradual thinning of hair. Some women with hair loss at an earlier than normal age, or excessive loss, have been tested for alterations in levels of male hormones including androgens like testosterone. The results of these studies are inconclusive as to the role those hormones may play in causing hair loss in women. Your doctor can help to determine the role of hormones in your situation by performing blood work. Severe hormonal imbalances may be treatable in some cases. Step 8. Evaluate your diet. Sudden changes in your diet and sudden weight loss can contribute to hair loss in most cases. Hair loss related to nutrition or diet falls in the category of telogen effluvium, meaning it is often temporary. Talk to your doctor or work with a nutritionist. Your doctor can perform physical exams and lab work that can provide evidence of vitamin or nutrient deficiencies. Step 9. Realize the changes that occur with age. Reduced follicle size means that the area of your scalp that supports hair roots becomes smaller. But the number of follicles are basically the same. The overall reduction in the size of hair follicles still allows for hair to grow and develop. As always, only the hairs are much finer, leading to thinning of the hair as opposed to areas of baldness. Studies done in women that experience FPHL indicate that the normal aging process includes thinning of hair. This usually begins somewhere around age 40, with the greatest impact in women 70 years of age or older.